What is a lame joke where the punchline is that I have a Patreon? Why did the indie game developer cross the road? To remind you that they have a Patreon. I really don't understand how this is gonna help. scratch last time I told you how to throw an object and then I said next video we're gonna teach you how to place an item well apparently I lied and I shouldn't make promises like that because I have ADHD instead we're gonna be not talking about a specific mechanic but instead some overarching head systems that either get completely misinterpreted over explains or not explained at all a good example would be the game instance, which is what we're going to talk about today. Imagine the game instance is a place where we can store a bunch of information and then retrieve information from it or have it send information to control things, kind of like a control tower at an airport. It sits to the side and lets you know whenever you can land, when a plane's taking off, and it keeps everything controlled and in sync. And because it uses and because it is used that way, oftentimes it is a place where we'll put save and load systems because it's already kind of keeping track of everything going on. So by using that information, we can just kind of save the state of the game and then load it back in. If you're new, please don't panic. A lot of times people will look up how to make save load systems and oftentimes they are over explained. The person telling you what to do usually doesn't know what's going on and the ones that do they're a little ambitious with what you know. They'll jump into things like, well, you're going to need a GUID for every specific actor. You're going to then map that to a set of different maps that have custom variables for each individual map that then gets resent back out to all the objects, which is only necessary if you're spawning in items and those items need to remain spawned whenever you come back to the game. Like, for example, if you were playing Skyrim and you made a bunch of iron daggers and then you dropped them in Whiterun, well, those daggers weren't there originally, so they're going to need GUIDs, which stands for Global Unique Identifier. It's basically saying, hey, give this item a GUID so you know what it is and you can bring it back. However, if you have a persistent level where you're not spawning in dynamic items and PCs, things of that nature, you can actually have a very simplified save and load system. Now, obviously some of you may need the GUID system, but we're gonna be creating a very simple save load and teaching you about the game instance. Later on, if there's demand for it, we'll add the GUIDs and everything else. The first thing I wanna do is show you the game instance. So we're actually gonna create our own. Let's hit control space. And we're gonna go into our blueprints folder and we're actually gonna create a new one. So we're gonna get a new folder and I'm gonna call this systems. And within systems, we are going to right click. We're gonna to go to a new blueprint class. And in under all classes, we're gonna to have to do a search. You're gonna type in game instance. And there's the platform one. Don't worry about it. Just click on game instance and hit select. Now I just do GI as my naming convention and underscore and then usually the name of the game. However, in my case, I don't have one. So we'll do GI horror game from scratch. Control shift S and open that bad boy up. And it looks like a pretty normal blueprint with less functionality? Well, in a way, you're kind of right. It's a primitive blueprint because it's mostly here to hold and deliver information. Think of this as something that is always loaded no matter what, and it's very easy to access from any other blueprint you have. So in a way, it's like having global variables. Only kind of. Remember, like a control tower at an airport, this thing is going to control the flow of the game now i know you're probably wanting specific examples and i know they would be extremely helpful right now so i'll make one up think of something like ocarina of time for those that aren't familiar it's a semi-open world game where you have to complete dungeons get items and then you get access to different areas based on how far you are into the story and how many items you have 
Well, the game instance would serve as a perfect place to have all of those story flags and maybe even item flags stored so that way, let's say when you load in a level, I need to know, has the player already blown up this rock? Well, the game instance is here to tell you yes or no. Now you might be thinking, why the game instance? Why not some other feature or blueprint that we create? As I said, the game instance is always loaded. It is always present, even if you don't make use of it. So you might as well make use of it. And as I said, it's very easy to access. In fact, to show you how it's always loaded, now that we have it created, let's go to our project settings. I have the tab open, but if you don't, you'll want to go to edit and then project settings. Within project settings, I'm going to do a search. I'm just going to type in game instance and look, we have a field specifically for the game instance we're going to be using. Since we can't edit the default one, we're just going to go ahead and get this drop down menu and you'll see ours is here now. Boom, and now it knows we're using the custom one that we're, we're creating right now. So what are we gonna put into the game instance? What's something we can test? I know exactly what we'll do. Let's go ahead and hit control space and let's head over to dark BPs or whatever yours is called. And in our interfaces, we're gonna go ahead and create a new one. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to blueprint, blueprint interface. I'm gonna do a BPI underscore game instance. So this is gonna be anything game instance related, obviously. Let's go ahead and pop that open. So for our first function, let's go ahead and click on new function and hit F2 to rename it. And I'm going to name it save underscore add actor, control shift S, compile. And then for an input, we are going to simply name it actor. And you'll never guess, but the type is going to be actor. Hello, it is me from the future. If you're seeing this, it's because every time I tell you to make it an object reference, I'm wrong. Make it a soft object reference. The hard reference will be deleted upon a reload. If that doesn't make sense yet, just it's a soft object reference. Anyway, back to the path. Object reference, compile and save. As you can see, it's the start of our save system, but don't worry, we're not gonna worry too much about that logic until it's necessary. So we have save add actor. Let's go to our game instance and believe it or not, if you go to class settings, you can implement interfaces. So we are going to implement BPI game instance and we're gonna hit compile and save. So now we've got our save add actor and we're gonna create a variable and I'm just gonna call this saved actors. The type is going to be an actor object reference and we're gonna right click the dot to make it a grid pattern so it is an array. Then we're gonna go ahead and double click on save add actor to get access to the custom event we've created. And we're gonna pull out our new array and hit get. Then what we're gonna do is pull out of saved actors and you're gonna type in add unique. And the reason we're gonna type in add unique instead of just add is because in case there's any weird logic that causes one of our actors to enter this array twice, it won't because now it's checking. It's like, is it unique? Oh, it is, okay, go ahead and add it. Control shift S, compile. I just realized I need to explain something or this example is not going to make sense. In case you didn't know because you're new to gaming or, or not game. In case you didn't know, in case, in case you didn't know because you're new to game development or just haven't simply messed with this, anytime you load a map or level in Unreal Engine, all of the defaults are what are loaded. So therefore, if you had something dynamic, like the rock that exploded, and it needs to stay exploded, it means you're gonna have to save that information somewhere. And the game instance is one of the few things that is persistent through loading of new maps. And since it's always accessible, are you, are you catching on? Are you figuring out why the game instance is so important anyway? All right, so we now have this thing where we're sending the game instance a message and we're like, hey, I need you to add a unique actor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our actors 
and I'm gonna open up my BP key, okay? We're gonna head to the event graph. I lied, we're actually gonna go to our interfaces and we're gonna go to the interact request. So this right here, okay? So before we tell it to destroy the actor, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and send the game instance the fact that we have been picked up, okay? So this is how easy it is to access the game instance from anywhere. If I right click the graph, I can type in get game instance. There it is. Now, if you had a specific custom event, you wouldn't be able to call it. Like, let me give you an example. Custom event, we'll call it rainbow, right? So this is rainbow, right? Pile and save. I want these both compiled and saved so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. If I pull out of this, I can't call rainbow because this is a generic call to the game instance. It doesn't know what game instance, it's just grabbing the game instance. So if you wanted to do something where you called a specific custom event, you would wanna pull out, you would then have to cast to GI and then mine's horror game from scratch. And then from there, you could then call rainbow, okay? However, in most cases, I can't really think of anywhere it wouldn't be like this. We're just gonna use the interface we created. So from get game instance, we're gonna pull out save add actor and boom. Now it doesn't matter what game instance because we're just sending it a message. And for actor, go ahead and just pull out and type in the word self and it will get a reference to itself and it will add it to that array. Let's go ahead and compile and save. And remember, this is in BP key. So on interact request, when we pick the key up, it is going to tell the game instance about itself. No more, just that, hey, something has happened and I need you to know. File and save. And what we're gonna do, let's get rid of rainbow. We don't need rainbow. Okay. So, key is now gonna be in here if we pick it up. Meaning, remember this big key we have right here? Meaning, if we pick this up, it'll go into this array. Now, let's go into the level blueprint of this area. So, I'm gonna go into here, and we're gonna open up the level blueprint. Oh yeah, I was teaching you guys about uh, event dispatchers, I forgot about that. We're gonna create a custom event, and it's going to be called GI because it's going to be game instance related underscore load actors. That's actually not accurate. Let's call it like load. This is going to sound really silly. Load saved actors. But I think in context, it's fine. Control shift S compile. Let's go ahead and move over to our interface we created. So let's go back to the game instance interface. And let's add a function, and it's going to be called load underscore saved actors. So we're going to hit compile and save. And we shouldn't need an input for this. You know what? We do need an output, though. So on the output, let's go ahead and hit add. We're just going to tell it, we're going to call it, you know what, call it saved actors. Let's go ahead and make the variable type an actor object reference. And let's make this an array. And we're gonna hit compile and save. So it'll always return with a array. So back in our level blueprint, I'm going to get game instance. Oh, sorry. Get the game instance. And we are going to send it the message of load saved actors. And it will return all of the saved actors. But of course, we also need to set this up in the game instance. I hope I'm not jumping around too much. Um, these higher level systems can be a little confusing, but you do have to jump between them. Um, so if you need to watch multiple times, please do so. And if something is just not making sense, uh, politely ask in a question down below, preferably with what doesn't make sense and not just I'm lost, otherwise I can't help. Anyway, we're calling the game instance and we're saying, hey, we need you to load saved actors. So let's go back to the game instance and set that up. On the left, let's open that up by uh, clicking the load saved actors. And the only thing we really need to do is return the variable of saved actors like that. So we'll hit compile and save. 
So now whenever we load the level, we get the saved actors that are in that array. And what do I want to do with them? Well, I want to go ahead and make a for each loop, right? So for each of these actors, in case you don't know how for each loops work, it's going to go through the entire array, okay? So if there's one thing in here, it's going to loop once. If there's 10 things in here, it's going to loop 10 times, okay? So on the first pass, it's going to, this array element is going to be the first actor that's saved. That's what the array element is. Second pass, this is the second actor in the list, okay? So let's go ahead and create one more interface. Um, the reason I'm creating one more interface, by the way, is because some actors are going to be interactable. Some actors are going to be pawns, and then you've got the player, of course. However, not everything is going to be interactable upon a player, okay? So we need an interface that specifically is for saving and loading. So I'm going to right click and we're going to create a blueprint, blueprint interface. And we're going to do a BPI underscore and I'm just going to call it like save load. Okay. Control shift S and compile and save. Now, in this case, the key is going to be something that has to be saved and loaded. So in its class settings, yes, it's interactable, but also it is something that we want we need to keep track of if it's saved or loaded. So we're gonna go ahead and throw in that additional interface. You can see how these, not all interactable things need to save and load and not everything that saves and load is interactable. That's why it's two interfaces, compile and save. Let's go ahead and open up the save load interface. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to rename this function with F2, load underscore, actor response and i know that sounds silly but you'll see why i'm calling it that and it doesn't need an input or an output all this is going to do is serve as a way to communicate with any actor that's in here that you are indeed in the list you're on the list so out of the array element we are going to type in load actor response as a message and plug it into the loop body so it's going to go through this entire list and with a for each loop and send every actor a message load actor response okay compile and save so right now the only thing that would have it is the one key here so if we went up and picked this key up it would send a message to the game instance the game instance adds it to the list. Then on our level blueprint, so when the level loads, it looks into the saved actors and says, hey, you need to go through them all and tell them that they're on the list. But why, why am I doing this? Well, if we pick the key up and the level loads again, the key shouldn't be there. Otherwise, every time the level loads, you'll be able to pick the key up again, and eventually your key ring will have 27 of the same key. So now we can define a response that the key will have whenever it is told that it's on the list. On the left hand side, load actor response. Let's double click that. Well, in this case, the only thing we want is for it to not exist. So if you're on the list, destroy actor, compile and save. Now, to test this, we're going to add, I like to call it a debug hotkey, okay? So we're going to go into input, we're going to go to actions, and I'm going to create a new input, input action, IA underscore, and then I like to just do all caps debug, control shift S to save all, and then open it up. And here for triggers, we're going to hit add, and we pretty much only want down or pressed. If it's pressed, we need to know, that's about it. And we will close that. And then we are gonna head to our first person input, uh, IMC default, and we are going to add a new button. In this case, it is going to be the debug button. 
and I'm going to make it some obscure button like num9, control shift s to save all. And now we need to head to our first person blueprint, first person character. Let's go ahead and I forgot to comment this. Throw, show bubble when zoomed, okay. Now we need an enhanced input action and we don't want the action value, we want the actual event for debug. And whenever it is started, what we're gonna do is we are going to open level by name, okay? So basically whenever we hit the button, it's just gonna reload the level because we're gonna use the first person uh, map as our level here. So for level name, I'm just going to type in first person map, and we're going to hit compile and save. So before we test it, let's make sure we're all on the same page. We pick up this key. The key, when picked up, sends the game instance a message to add itself to the list. The game instance receives the message and adds it to the list. Then, whenever we reload the map, the level blueprint sends the game instance a message that says, hey, I need the list. It goes through the list and tells the actors, hey, you're on the list. In this case, the key is going to receive that message. And because it's on the list, it's going to destroy itself. So... Control shift S so it's all saved. I'm gonna make sure they're all compiled real quick. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit play. And whenever we get into the map, I'm gonna walk up and I'm gonna press F. Now, we've picked up the key. So now when we come back to the map, we don't want that key there. So let's hit num9 and see if it's there. We didn't add it to event begin play. All right, let's 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 make sure that's on event begin play. Hold on. So GI load save actors, event begin play, GI load, oh, load saved act. You know, that, that helps, okay? Running the code helps. Okay, so we'll walk up, F, reload the map. Okay, so now that I've switched everything over to a soft actor reference, um, you'll see that I can pick up the key and then I can press the reload button and it is successfully removing it upon begin play. Now, there's a difference between saving in a single session and saving between multiple sessions. For example, if I reload right now, it's just not there, but that's because we're playing in the exact same session. So if I hit escape and I hit play again, this is a new session. So there is a difference, okay? The game instance persists through level loads in the same session. If there's a new session, they leave the game, they come back, that data is gone unless we save it using the actual save system that we're going to create. However, this is to show you the power of the game instance. But that's it for today, and when we come back, we're actually going to tackle saving a hard copy onto the user's drive so we can load it up between sessions. Like, comment, subscribe, you guys are great, and I'll see you in the next one.